Hello, beautiful souls, and welcome back to my welcome back to my channel, Soul Journey. My name is Beck, and today we are going to do um, we're going to connect into spirit um, on the topic of self care and self love. I just recently entered my third trimester. It's kind of chilly in the camper. Um, I'm feeling kind of off. There's like so much I want to do today because we have like plans for the weekend or just things we're doing this weekend. And I'm just like, oh, I want to get stuff done before like I'm in that mode. And uh, I'm just not feeling it. I'm just like comfy clothes, whatever. Um, my hair, I don't even know. I need to shower. Um, <laughs> so I thought today we could do pull some cards from a couple decks and see what spirit says about self-care today so if this resonates with you drop a comment down below how are you feeling today I've actually been feeling really good in general it's just today I'm just needing like a little like you know so I'm gonna start with the sacred rebels oracle and just kind of step into a space of receiving if you want to join in on this reading see what spirit has to say to the collective just take a few deep breaths whenever you're seeing this video you're a vibrational match so even if it's a year from now this is the message that you're supposed to hear so just take a few deep breaths um, and ask your guides to help assist in integrating whatever message message it is you are supposed to hear right now um for your own well-being for your connection into your heart space and we'll get into it actually i'm feeling like we need to take a few deep breaths so if you want to if you can put place your hands over your heart and take a few deep breaths Really bring your awareness down into your heart space. You are worthy of your own time and care and patience. Time is man-made. All we have is the current now. You are worthy of taking a break, worthy of your own care You are worthy of the pause. All right. Getting grounded into your sits bones. And let's pull some cards. Let's get let's get connected. It's just started to rain. <laughs> she feels she knows. Mm. What I'm hearing is don't escape your feelings right now. Your feelings are telling you where you're at vibrationally, what you need. And you can observe your feelings and use them as a tool without being caught up in them. Okay? Caught up in the story of those feelings, but rather just feeling the feelings. Something that I think we often say but don't really register what it means you know feel your feelings what does that mean when it comes to a feeling there are actually two different parts there's the story the mental side of it like why it's coming up you know the mental and then the literal feeling within your body feeling your feelings is about the feeling <laughs> i know that seems like obvious when it's said but like so many of us just analyze the feeling and don't actually get present with it to help it release when you get present with the feeling it helps your body integrate and process that feeling so that you can move forward so what I'm hearing today is she feels she knows get to know yourself get to know your body and most of us have been very disconnected from our body we've been told that our feelings are um, these wild creatures that just need to be tamed and they're not there for a reason. 
And so feel the feeling in your body. Um, does it feel tight? Does it feel expansive? Does it feel deep? What is it? Is it tightness? Whatever that is. Right now I'm feeling some tightness in my chest, in my back. Feel the feelings. And through that, you can process the feeling. And then once you've kind of alleviated that from your body, you can move into your headspace and actually look at maybe why it's coming up. And once you've worked through the feelings in your body, that exploration mentally can feel a lot more gentle, a lot more neutral. All right, spirit, what are we? All right, we have two cards. We have come to life. What? is already with you. Mm. Come to life and what is already with you. I'm hearing first wholeness. You're already whole. No matter what you've been through, no matter the experiences, you never truly lose who you are. You may block it off from your conscious awareness. You may stifle it. You may put walls up. Um, you may feel detached, but you are always whole, okay? And this has come to life. And so what I'm seeing with this is it's time to really get present with you. It's really time. And see, this card is black and white, and they're, they're painting uh, the color into them. Allow yourself to realize that all the pieces of you are there and they are still there to be accessed if you choose. And a lot of the reason we often aren't aware of those pieces of us is because we haven't felt into them. We haven't been present with them so that she feels she knows card. Um, as you feel yourself, those pieces of you will start coming to the surface again as parts of you. And these parts are going to be coming alive for you. And it could be challenging. There could be aspects of you that you have resisted, but let them come alive is what I'm hearing. Let them. You have these butterflies, okay? All of these are beautiful pieces, okay? All right, so those are the cards from the Sacred Rebels. Now I want to step into the Sacred Cycles Oracle to get an idea of where we are on this journey. Spirit, what phase, what cycle are we in right now when it comes to this feeling, this deep exploration, this coming alive, this renewing of ourselves? All right, we have the ovaries. Interesting. Let's see what the book has to say about that. Oh, interesting. And then we have Motherwort. This actually came with the book. It was it was attached to the book. So let's look at both of these. I'm going very intuitively today. You know, if you're just starting to work with cards or you've never worked with cards, so many people, you know, when they start, they work with spreads and they're learning the cards and that's all beautiful, but it's also okay to do this exploration. Just see what comes up intuitively. All right. We have 47. Be gentle with yourself. It's okay to slow down. I am a creative being. The seat of creative energy within the sacred body's generative space, ovaries, hold, generative space, ovaries hold eggs, or energetically speaking, potential life to be made manifest. Each of the eggs is formed, nurtured, and then sent forth from this space. They are infused with an unimaginable, un <laughs> unimaginable amount of wisdom and life force program to replicate, grow, and then grace the world with an entirely new creation. 
Your visionary power is flourishing at this time. The energetic potential that is bubbling just under the surface is becoming more noticeable, demanding your acknowledgement, time, and attention. Sp this spark does not necessarily need to be an official project or have any particular purpose behind it other, other than just allowing your creative energy to flow freely. Give yourself the unbound opportunity to let this power be felt and then fully expressed. You as a human are by default a creative being and have the impulse within you to bring this energy forth. Go forward and create for the sake of creating. And then the journal prompt. If you're interested, you can comment it down below or just do it on your own. Do I consider myself a creative person? Where is my light? Where in my life does creativity play a role? All right. So we're talking about the spark of creativity. All right. The beginning energy. So I'm feeling with those cards before. Let us gently go into this exploration intentionally creating a space for ourselves, um, recognizing that there's opportunity in each choice we make for ourselves, allowing that creative energy to flow. I think a lot of us just let our energy go to the shoulds instead of it being towards our intentional work, like self-care, like creating the life we want, all of those things. And so being aware of that. All right. And then we have mugwort, sorry, motherwort, um, all my cycles are sacred. Ooh, this is good. The grandmother of the garden, Mother Wart, wields cyclical wisdom, displaying her maiden mother and crone stages each growing season with the ways her leaves and flowers morph, morph through the phases. She is a deep embodiment of feminine personal consciousness. Mother Wart is here to assist and guide you in tending to your sacred cycles. You are being encouraged to look more deeply at how cycles and patterns show up in your life. There may be certain stages of your personal development and process that you like to glorify, ones that you would prefer to forget, and even ones you, per you perhaps find yourself trying to extend beyond the necessary life cycle. Notice how you may embrace or avoid certain aspects and check in with yourself to find the reasons. With deeper inquiry comes deeper integration and a renewed sense of harmony and self-acceptance. Motherwort is here to bring you awareness and walk you forward with a more holistic understanding of your cyclical nature. She illuminates the blessings found in every season, both the internal and the earthly ones. Journal prompt. Which of my phases or seasons do I enjoy the most? Which would I skip if I could? Mm, all seasons are sacred. Beautiful. So what I'm feeling with this, this slowing down, this internal feeling is that process can be one that we avoid is what I'm feeling. We can avoid so many of the slowing down moments because we're taught it's our pre uh, pr productivity that makes us worthy of being here on this planet. And, you know, if we're not going, 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 what are we worth? And oftentimes we have to shut down our feelings, our internal work, because we feel that we aren't worthy without it. And so what I'm hearing with this sacred cycles, what like all cycles are sacred is the slowing down is as just as important as the outward and and the slowing down inward energy is the feminine and um or the yin energy and the forward moving outward energy is the masculine or masculine or the yang energy and we we often see those as men and man and woman or fe, you know female and male and, and we all have both right but these are the energies okay and just like the in breath and the out breath, all of them are necessary for the cycle of life, right? Just like the ebb and flow. So the, you know, the in and out, right? And the going in, we've rejected a lot of that, I believe. And so what I'm hearing is with this ovaries is 
set the intention, begin the process of allowing for the inward. The inward breath, okay? Because all parts of cycles are sacred, okay? So, now that we have this, we're, we're honoring the inward breath. We're honoring the parts of ourselves we've rejected. Also, notice in that other card, it was the, um, what's already there, you know, coming to life, um, honoring the different aspects of ourselves, right? Um, that had a similar thing of honoring each cycle. So, so let's, let's pull a few tarot to get some more clarity on this phase of our life. All right. And if while I'm shuffling, you just want to take a few deep breaths, help to integrate that message. All cycles are sacred. Pregnancy. My dog just recently went into her first heat. The spring is transitioning we're transitioning from winter to summer all parts of the journey are sacred okay we have four of wands mm. stability joy celebration pause to appreciate okay celebrate each moment celebrate each cycle there can be joy found in each cycle there is stability in each cycle, in each chapter, okay? Each phase of the cycle. And then we have Queen of Cups in reverse. And we have the Sun in reverse. Interesting. Ooh, I'm hearing feel into the sorrows. Feel into all of the feelings instead of the ones that just feel good. And it's important to recognize that acknowledging being present with the feelings that don't feel good, we're often told, well, that's not a high vibration. That's, you know, you're living in the negativity. Observing and being present and feeling with the awareness of love, compassion, appreciation, utilizing it as a tool is still a high vibration around feeling things that may not feel as good. Okay, you can do both. You can have an awareness that something doesn't feel good and then recognize the opportunity that comes with that awareness. Okay, I'm feeling a little lethargic. I'm feeling a little slow. What does that mean? How can I utilize that? How can I care for myself? How can I have appreciation for the system that is sharing this information with me? Okay, that's not getting caught up in in the discomfort but rather seeing it as a beautiful language of the body right okay we have five of cups mm. just like a crying child being with your uncomfortable broken pieces they may feel broken be the nurturer of your own inner being be the nurturer be present with the aspects of you that have not been touched have not been hugged all right we have this nine of swords in reverse We have been in for so long the story of pain and hurt and rejecting ourselves, this, this nightmare. That even though the, the universe is vast and there's infinite realities, we have really let ourselves be in the, the nightmare, the dream, without the awareness that there is so much more for us. And it's okay to acknowledge what that has done to our psyche 
to our heart. It's okay to acknowledge that we've abandoned ourselves. It's okay to acknowledge that there has been discomfort. It's okay to acknowledge that that has been uncomfortable. But then recognizing that that has been a level of illusion. All right, we can, we can, you know, we don't have to dismiss the discomfort and the pain just because we're aware it's an illusion. We can, we can hold both aspects of the, that, okay? And then we have this Three of Cups. Hmm. I hear in coming to communion with yourself, come into communion with others. We all have been living this collective dream of unworthiness, being outward with, without being present for ourselves. We've all been in this collective dream. And when you start having awareness that everyone has been living that lie, that illusion, you start to really feel so much more compassion for them, but then also so much more compassion for yourself when it comes to the struggle you've had. Because when you've, you've, you know, dug out a rut for so long, it can take a minute to pull yourself out of it, you know, allowing for that divine timing, allowing for that, that journey. It doesn't have to be fixed overnight. It can be a process. And so being gentle with yourself for not just knowing how to solve everything for yourself, okay? And we have this nine of swords again. Allow yourself time to wake up. Allow yourself time to integrate these pieces of you. Even if they've been there all along, you're meeting pieces of yourself that have not been acknowledged for a very long time. And so they can feel like strangers. Okay, yes, we have this two of wands. You're just starting this journey. <laughs> You're just starting this journey, okay? Take a moment to decide what you want. Start processing and saying, yes, this is, this is what I want to be more present with myself. But again, you're at the beginning of the journey. You don't have to rush through it. It's a process, you know, coming to light, right? All parts of the journey or cycle are sacred. All right, and we have this Queen of Cups. For so long, we've rejected the intuitive side of ourself, the creative side of ourself, the divine feminine queen side of ourself, no matter how you express or feel about your current incarnation. The nurturer, the feeler, the intuitive, okay? Because being intuitive, being creative, means we have to be honest with ourselves. We have to be present with ourselves, okay? And that can be scary when we've been taught that so much of ourself is unlovable. And if we love that part of ourselves, then we then will not be loved. That is what we've been told. And then we have this Knight of Wands in reverse. Again, it doesn't need to be a rush. It doesn't need to be an aggressive exploration. It can be a slow, gentle meeting of the self, okay? Even if it's just five minutes every morning, just taking deep breaths, feeling your body, okay? Page of Cups, yes. Allow yourself to drink tea. Allow yourself to be in the yummy exploration of the new. Watery. Soft, fluid energy, okay? All right, and we have this Eight of Pentacles in reverse. And then we have Queen of Pentacles. Interesting. So I hear with this Eight of Pentacles in reverse that we haven't been doing the work, okay? We have been resisting this, this exploration, this learning, this honing of ourselves, all right? And with this Queen of Pentacles, it means we need to take charge. We need to 
the queen of pentacles is such a yummy energy it's it's uh, creating a safe space it's um nurturing your business your finances your self-care your home and this can be internal or external right and so what i hear is the queen of pentacles um is in charge of her life um knows what she wants goes after it understands the cycles of her life um the beauty of um creating a home for yourself okay um the nurturing stability of that and so i hear we need to take this energy and start this exploration start this honing this learning the really learning of ourselves i'm hearing go get the books that either you've already purchased or you know go get the ones you have on your wish list right and then read them <laughs> like I have so many books that I want to engage in, so much knowledge I want to learn from, right? And it's easy to watch the videos and the TikToks and the things and just like kind of like fill your brain. But a, a book, I'm, I'm getting the energy of the slowing down, this this queen of pentacles, the physical, okay? Um, the books, it puts you in, a, in one space. There's not this all over the place energy. It's focused, it's direct, it's clear. Go and really embrace the knowledge that you've already known you want, but have not really done the work, you know, put in the work to really, you know, get into it. And if there's a journal prompt or if there is a, you know, a practice, do it. Just don't skip over it. Do it. Really start to own the actual work of getting to know yourself, getting to be with those spaces of yourself. And this is all in that slowing down energy, the uh, recognizing that all the cycles are sacred. And we have this page of wands, be playful with it, okay? In this beautiful, slow exploration, uh, be curious, um, be um, willing to look at it with a child mind. You know, let go of the judgments, let go of the um, need to be right or wrong, but just curious about oneself. Because when we release the judgment about what's wrong or what's right, we can then just observe and explore and, you know, meet, again, meet parts of ourselves without judgment, but just saying, hey, thank you for being here. Thank you for being a part of this puzzle, okay? And we have this five of cups, even the pieces that don't feel good, come to them with um, an eye of curiosity and um, allowing for them just to show who they are without needing them to be something specific, okay? Let's see, Spirit, is there any other wisdoms? <laughs> we have two of cups. Become your best friend. Allow yourself to integrate these pieces for yourself. Be gentle with yourself. You are your own soulmate, okay? We are often so looking for the acceptance and the validation and, and things like that from the external. Be your own best friend friend and within that vibration you will then attract others who hold that same presence with you but if you don't hold it with yourself as much as you can be in beautiful relationships and you can you can be in that because of other beliefs and things you may not get the depth of soulmate that you want because you aren't holding the belief that you are worthy yourself of your own self okay and so you know they say they a lot of people say oh i don't like the idea of like if you don't love yourself no one will love you or you know like no one can truly love you if you don't love yourself it's not about that someone can't love you it's that you may not be able to receive it at the depth that you desire those are two very different things if you are not in a space of saying yes i'm worthy of feeling this Someone could love you all day long and you may not be able to feel it the way you would desire, okay? Those are two very different things, okay? And then we have this page of swords. Again, be curious. Uh, let your mind, again, be in the child mind. Um, and the page of swords is also about um, being in a learning, in a learning phase. So again, with that, that eight of pentacles, being in a... Um, observer, a curious energy, um, honing yourself, learning. And then we have this king of wands. Remember, you are truly at the reins. You do have ultimately the creative energy um, behind this. So make it what you want. Uh, we're not slaves to 
a grander plan. Um, we are all collectively journeying together as one being. Each of us plays a beautiful part in that by being authentic, by being autonomous, okay? So recognize that no one can tell you what this journey is supposed to look like. You get to decide how you want to take this journey. And that can be scary because we've lived so much of our lives being told what to do. And we have this nine of cups. There is so much joy for you in this process. Not even just at the end, in this process, you can feel the joy and the love through this process, okay? And then we have this three of wands. Yes, on this journey, on this journey that you are currently on already, it may feel like you're at the beginning, but the fact that you're being pulled to do this means that you already are on the path. All you have to do is surrender to it, okay? And then we have this seven of pentacles. Trust the divine timing. Let it grow the way it needs to. You do not have to rush this, okay? And then we have this Knight of Wands in reverse. Again, you don't need to rush it. Um, you don't need to, you know, bring the fire and brimstone and just like tear through yourself. Be present, patient, okay? And then we have this Page of Cups again. Allow yourself to be peaceful. Allow yourself to be present. Be reflective, Okay. All right, beautiful soul. I believe this is the end of the message. Thank you so much for joining me. Comment down below if you'd like more of these deep dives into um, different topics. Is there a topic that you would like to um, have me pull cards on and get clarity on uh, when it comes to different aspects of our life? You know, this was about self-care and self presence today is there anything you'd like and maybe i can do another video where we can pull some decks and just really get into what spirit wants to share with us and help us with remember spirit isn't here to tell us what to do spirit is here to assist us in our journey and spirit and our guides are not here to take away our free will but rather to guide us towards what we want and we have to ask for that Okay, this is our journey. They are here to guide us and help us. So, you know, we often look at our guides as these beings that know so much better than us. And, you know, we should just surrender to what they want. But they're here to say, what do you want? And how can we assist you in getting there? Okay, I feel like that's the real parent relationship we always desired, right? We didn't want beings, other people telling us what to do. We wanted those beings to be present with us on our journey and say, hey, I see this interests you. I see this is the, the goals you want. How can we help you get there? How can we give you the tools so you can do it yourself? That's what we really want. We want the responsibility. We want the journey. We want the excitement of that. We don't want people to do it for us. And we don't want them to tell us why we should or shouldn't do the thing. It's our journey. We wanted the relationship 3333. Three, three, three. We wanted the relationship of the guide to assist us in the molding of our path, not anyone else's. And that's what our guides are there to do. Our guides are the relationship that we always desired from most of the people who didn't really know how to be present with us because no one was really present with them. And not that they didn't have guides, but that, you know, they weren't aware that they could tap into that beautiful relationship. And so now we're having the awareness that we can. And not only can we allow for that relationship, but as we learn the sacredness of that guide relationship, we can then be that for our children and our friends and our community. Um, not taking the reins, but giving the tools and saying, here, I see you. I see what you're trying to do. Would you like help? Would you like assistance? And really being present with their journey, not what you think it should be. Okay. And then we learn to do that with ourselves as well. And that can sometimes be the most challenging. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. Um, you are always a blessing. I always love seeing your comments. If you would like a personal reading, um, I am offering 
um, readings and channeling uh, through my Etsy. Um, so if you'd like to check that out, I am doing a 25% off uh, sale until the end of Taurus season, which is just a couple days. So um, definitely go check that out. And um, I have my other social media and all that down below as well if you'd like to check that out. And if you'd like to um, see any more deck reviews or things like that, I do also have my wish list down there with a bunch of decks I'm curious about. So if any of those intrigue you and you'd like my take on them, they're down there as well. So thank you so much for being present and with yourself and this exchange. And if you want to see more videos like this in the future, definitely hit the like button and hit subscribe. Um, it's always a blessing. So thank you so much, beautiful being. Um, don't forget to love yourself. There's a lot of things we give care to and often it's not ourself. It's okay to love yourself. It's okay to Appreciate yourself. Nurture yourself. You are worthy of that. You are so loved. Many blessings. Namaste. And don't forget, it's all about the soul journey.